The brain. It's involved in everything you do, the way you feel and how you think. You probably don't even realize how many things your brain helps you do, like breathing, smelling, tasting, and learning. For example, if you're playing basketball, the vision area of your brain lets you see the basket, judge the distance, and keep an eye on the other team. The movement area of the brain helps your legs and arms work together to dribble, run, and shoot. Some parts of your brain can affect how you feel. Feeling happy because you made the shot? Angry because you missed it? Your brain is helping you to understand these feelings. The brain also helps us think, plan, and make choices. These functions are what make us human and different from animals. Without the thinking part of the brain, we would simply eat, drink, reproduce, and seek shelter. This boy's ability to think on the run and make decisions about who to pass the ball to or when to take the shot are all functions of the cerebral cortex of the brain. The cerebral cortex is made up of four sections called lobes. Each of these lobes have different jobs to do. Located at the back of the brain, the occipital lobe's job is to see. The parietal lobe, just above the occipital lobe, is responsible for our sense of touch. The front part of the brain, or frontal lobe, is involved with movement and thinking. The temporal lobe receives messages from our ears so that we can hear. All four areas of the cerebral cortex work together to help this boy make his basketball shot. How the brain worked was considered a mystery for thousands of years. But in this century, scientists have used technology to help them understand much more about how the brain works. Like all parts of the body, the brain needs fuel to function. This fuel is brought to the brain through the bloodstream and is made up of oxygen, sugar, and other nutrients. The brain cannot work properly without constant blood flow. Knowing how much blood is flowing to the brain gives scientists a good idea of how well each part is working. Scientists use a well-known technique called single photon emission computed tomography, or SPECT, to produce colorful maps of blood flow to the brain. The red, white, and yellow areas show where there is a healthy supply of blood. The blue color around the edge is the scalp. But what happens when the brain is injured? Doctors use these blood flow maps to study the effects of illness or injury on the brain. Look at the SPECT image. When areas appear to be missing in the blood flow map, it means much less blood is getting to that area. While it looks like chunks of the brain are missing, they're not. They're just not getting as much blood as other areas. What happens to the person depends on what area of the brain is affected, how much blood is getting through, and other factors that researchers don't fully understand. The brain maps that you see are of real people. Their stories are based on medical histories and information they provided. Let's look at people who have suffered a lack of blood flow to the brain. Did you find it yet? No, not yet. 
Where did you put it last night? I thought I'd Jack is an older man with Alzheimer's disease. People with Alzheimer's disease lose their memory and their ability to think. They start forgetting things they have known since they were children, like their names, where they live, or even how to dress themselves. Let's look closely at Jack's brain. Blood flow appears to be missing, but in fact, it is reduced in many areas, including those needed to think, learn, and remember. The parts of the frontal lobe that appear to be missing involve thinking, learning, and memory. Since there is not enough blood flow in these areas, Jack can't learn anything new or remember much, even simple things. In contrast, Jack's vision and motor areas look healthy, red, yellow, and white. As you would imagine, he can see and walk just fine. Here's another example. Ed has had a stroke. A stroke occurs when a block in a blood vessel prevents blood from going to the brain. We know that each side of the brain controls the opposite side of the body. If a stroke occurs on the left side of the brain, like Ed's, the right side of your body is affected. This is Ed's brain. In most people, the language area is located on the left side of the brain. Ed's stroke affected his ability to speak and to move the right side of his body. Can you see why? The left half of his brain that controls these activities appears to be missing. But the right side of his brain looks fine. It's red, yellow, and white, and there are no areas of reduced blood flow that look like holes. These men have diseases that affect the brain. But there are other ways to reduce blood flow to the brain besides Alzheimer's disease or stroke. Through the use of SPECT, researchers at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts, have been able to see changes in the brains of people who have used drugs. These are young people who don't have diseases. Some say that they only use drugs occasionally. For these people, the areas of the brain that control memory, learning and decision making are most often the parts that suffer. Let's look at brain maps from real people who have used drugs. Here's a man who has been snorting cocaine and shooting it into his veins with a needle for over 10 years. And he's used many other drugs as well. There are many areas throughout his brain where blood flow is reduced. These areas appear as holes on the specked image. There is less blood flowing to the frontal lobe of the brain that affects thinking, learning, memory, and decision-making. This man is a heavy drug user. But what about people who say they only use drugs occasionally? This student calls herself an occasional drug user, but she smokes marijuana fairly often and has been snorting cocaine for about a year look at the specked image of her brain. There is reduced blood flow to the areas that affect learning and memory, important skills for students. This woman also calls herself an occasional drug user, but she has a fairly long history of frequent use. She has been smoking marijuana and using cocaine, mostly on weekends, off and on for years. She has less blood flow in the frontal lobe and other areas throughout her brain. Here's a medical technologist who works in the chemistry lab of a hospital. She started using cocaine, marijuana, and alcohol on weekends about a year ago. When she goes to work on Monday mornings, she says that sometimes she can't finish a job without looking things up in her notes. She's forgotten procedures that she used to know very well. This woman has used cocaine for less than a year. Despite only weekend use, her brain shows several areas where blood flow is not normal.
These are images of real people's brains. We don't know if these changes happen to everyone or what will happen over time or what the changes that scientists see now will mean later on. But it is likely that these changes are harmful and you should know that there are real risks involved in using drugs. Will your brain look like this? Or this? Stay smart. Don't start. The images you have seen are the result of research using scientifically advanced techniques that can measure blood flow to the brain. This work is being conducted at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts by Dr. B. Leonard Holman, chairman of the Department of Radiology. All of the brain images are of real people and their stories are based on medical histories and information they provided. Dr. Holman is continuing his research to learn more about the effects of drugs on the brain.